Martin, the fine-tuning of the universe has become one of the hottest subjects uh, in, in modern intellectual thought, uh, certainly among physicists and cosmologists mm -hmm. on one hand, but also philosophers, theologians. Everybody is mixing themselves up in this mm -hmm. fine-tuning, and, and it's something that I have to follow. I mean, I want to know what mm -hmm. this is all about. And a lot of people are soft about it. You've talked about fine-tuning very specifically in terms of just six numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's where we should start. Right. Well, of course, it's important that we have physical laws that we can understand and which apply not just here on Earth, but in the remotest parts of the universe we can observe. And were the universe more anarchic than that, we wouldn't understand <laughs> it at all. But we do have these physical laws and they have in them a set of numbers which we can't explain. They're the most fundamental sets of numbers we have. And uh, it's debatable how many there are. I wrote a book where I isolated six that I thought were especially important. The first of them was a number which I called N, which reflected the fact that gravity was a very weak force compared to the forces that hold atoms together. It's nearly 40 powers of 10 weaker An than electrical forces. Number. Yes, but that's essential because were gravity much stronger, then we couldn't have a big and long-lived universe. Mm. Creatures like us would be crushed by gravity. And so it's only because gravity is very weak compared to the microphysical forces that we have this immense range of scales between the micro world and the cosmos and this domain of the everyday world, which is huge compared to the micro world, but small compared to the cosmos where complex entities can exist. So the weakness of gravity is essential for a complex, long-lived universe. And such an enormous difference. I mean, be 10 to the approximately 39th or 40th is, is astonishing. That, that's right. That's the ratio of the electrical forces to the gravitational forces between two hydrogen atoms which you put together. So that's the first of the big numbers. Uh, the second number, which really is important for the atoms we are made of. It's a number which uh, determines the fact that we can imagine these atoms sticking together to make complex chemical elements, to make carbon, oxygen, and iron from simple hydrogen. Were that not possible, then of course we couldn't have any chemistry. And the fact that complex atomic nuclei can exist, which is a prerequisite for chemistry, this depends on a balance between two forces, the electrical forces, which tend to push the protons in a nucleus apart, and the so-called nuclear force, which binds them together. And it's only because of a fairly delicate balance between those two mm. that we have the periodic mm. table of elements which exists. So that's the second number what which do you is call not fully understood. Um, I call that uh, epsilon, or I related it to a number called epsilon, which is important for the existence of all these uh, chemical elements. And also, incidentally, were that number very different, it would not be possible for stars to get their nuclear fuel, because that nuclear fuel depends on fusion, which starts with simple elements, hydrogen and helium, and builds up the heavy elements. And those heavy elements, of course, make up our bodies eventually. We are literally the ashes of long dead stars, or if you're less romantic, the nuclear waste <laughs> and the fuel that makes the stars shine. So that number, which is the balance between two of the fundamental forces, has to be fairly well tuned. The third, the third number, which is a number which uh, is important for, as it were, space itself. It's normally called lambda, and it dates back to Einstein. And this is a number which some people thought was zero, but it turns out to be small, but large enough to be important for the long-range future of the universe. The universe is destined to go on expanding forever at an accelerating rate, because even though gravity dominates on the scale of uh, planets, stars, even galaxies, in the dilute realms of intergalactic space, this extra force, which causes a repulsion, not an attraction, takes over. And that determines the long-range future of the universe. This is called lambda. There's a thaw fourth uh, number, which, as it were, determines the texture of our universe. If you had a Big Bang, which was completely smooth to start with, then, of course, if it went on expanding for billions of years, it would end up just very cold, dilute, neutral hydrogen, no galaxies, no stars, and no people. What actually happens in our universe is that there are some irregularities which develop into galaxies and clusters of galaxies, etc. So there's structure in our universe. And the scale of that structure is determined by a fundamental number fed in at the very beginning, which I call Q. 
the number is about one over a hundred thousand. If it was much smaller than that, then there'd be no structures in the universe at all. On the other hand, if that number were larger, we'd be in a sort of chaotic, anarchic universe where we couldn't do cosmology at all because different parts of the universe would be governed by quite different physics from uh, other parts. So that number, Q, determines the, the texture of the universe. It mustn't be too large nor too small. There's a fifth number, which is a very fundamental number indeed, which is the dimensionality of the universe. We have three dimensions. You go forward and backwards, left and right, up and down, but that's it. There are just three spatial dimensions. And you can imagine a universe with two dimensions, a sort of flat land. You can, with greater difficulty, imagine a universe with four dimensions, but there's something very special about the three dimensions of our universe. And there's another number which is normally called omega, and this is, in a sense, a measure of how much stuff there is in the universe, a measure of the average density in the universe. Now, if you were to take all the atoms in all the galaxies and spread them uniformly through the mm -hmm. universe, you get about one atom in every five cubic meters. Wow. That's not all there is. There's also dark matter, which is about five times as dense overall as the atoms. But that seems very low, but we want to compare this with some characteristic density for the universe. And we can ask, what would the density of the universe have to be if gravity was eventually to overwhelm the kinetic energy of the expansion and bring the expansion to a halt? And the answer to that is about uh, five atoms per cubic meter, which is about 25 times more than the density of actual atoms and about five times more than the density of the atoms plus the dark matter. And so the omega is the ratio of the actual density to the so-called critical density, which determines where the universe expands forever. And the value of that determines how the universe is going to expand. Were it too low, then we wouldn't have any stuff to make the galaxies from. Were it very high, the universe would have collapsed long ago. Therefore, it is extremely critical for the existence of everything we know. That's right. So when you reflect on all six numbers collectively, how does it make you feel? Well, we can easily imagine universes which, as it were, are sterile or stillborn because the laws that govern them don't allow complexity to evolve. And what is marvelous about our universe is that there's been this chain of complexity that's built up. First structures were proto-galaxies, then stars, then planets, and then on at least one planet, around at least one star, a biosphere, which has evolved to the immense complexity of our biosphere, leading to the most complex things we know about in the universe, namely what's in our head, <laughs> able to wonder about it all. And so for that hierarchy of complexity to evolve, one can identify these physical constants, which had to be in particular ranges, because we needed to have the stars, we needed to have the atoms of carbon, oxygen, and iron, and we needed to have the long-term stability and scale and the amount of time. 